Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Gary Benton 10 and today here on this exciting Yu-Gi-Oh! video we are going to be going over the Magical Musketeer deck profile that I took to my worst regional yesterday, or it would, by the time this video is uploaded it would be last Saturday. Um, I made some horrible misplays that caused me to get 105th place out of like 236. So it's the top half, but it's still, I should have done a lot better. And if I would have read what some of my cards did, I probably would have um, done a lot better with this Magical Musketeer deck. And so, well, or after I go through the deck, we're going to talk about some of my matchups and what I could have done to actually improve. I should have done a lot better. And when I go to. Uh, the Lenexa, Kansas Regional at Collector's Cash in two weeks, and I'm going to play this deck again. I originally wasn't going to play this deck again, but I kind of have to want to try and redeem myself with this deck. But here is my Magical Musketeer deck profile, and so if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to give the video a like and comment down below. But starting off, we are playing three Magical Musketeer cast bars. This is the searcher for the deck. All the Magical Musketeer monsters have the effect that you can activate Magical Musket spells and traps from your hand. And then when a spell or trap is activated in the same column, they all do different things. So uh, cast bar searches for a Magical Musketeer card, which is really, really awesome. A lot of the times your best board is normal summon cast bar pass with like four or five spells in hand, which is really, really good. And then we have three Magical Musketeer Starfire. This is your OTK maker. And then also um, when, and how it does that is when a spell trap is activated in the same column as Starfire, then she specials another Magical Musketeer monster from your deck in defense position. If you summon another level four, then you can make Utopia Double which I didn't do at all this weekend. And then we're playing two Doc. Doc, when a spell or trap is activated in the same column, adds one magical musket card from your graveyard back to your hand. And then Kid Brave, you can discard a card to draw two when a spell or trap is activated. So we played two of those. And then we played one Wild, one Calamity, and then one Zachiel. So the reason why we played wild, most people aren't playing wild, but the reason why we played wild is that with wild, um, it's just another name, and then it's another level four if you already draw calamity, and then we played Zachiel. A lot of people don't play this card. This card was really good for OTKs with max, and I wasn't, I didn't really play Utopia Double. I don't think I played it at all really this weekend, except for one game where I was trying to troll my opponent, but. Um, with Zachiel, you summon it off max, and then Zachiel's effect is, during the end phase of your opponent's turn, you draw cards equal to the number of magical musket spells and traps with different names that you activated that turn. So, with Zachiel, it's really good because you can do a plus three, plus four, depending on how far into the game you are, and you just out-resource your opponent. And it didn't really brick too much. There was one time where I drew Zachiel in my opening hand, and I wished it was another magical musket. But I don't think there's another one that I would play. And that's it for the monsters. We're not playing any monster hand traps because you can't activate those in the same column as a Magical Musketeer monster. And then for our spell cards, we're playing Triple Ties of the Brethren. Most Game 2s that if I knew I was going second, I cited this out for some of my going second cards. I cited out all three copies because Max is just so much powerful in that in that area that you don't need the Ties of the Brethren, but this is an amazing going first card to help you swarm the board. Um, if you Ties of the Brethren, any of the level threes, you get Kid Brave, Doc, and Caspar on board, which is just super amazing for recur recurring your spell cards. And then for our Magical Musket spell cards, Play Triple Cross Domination, this negates your opponent's monster effect and makes the attack zero. And then one Steady Hands, which Steady Hands doubles your monster's attack but it can't attack directly, which is really, really good. Uh, I ended up dealing with a lot of Colossus over the weekend with Cross Domination, which was really good. And then we have, for just our generic spell cards, Triple Call by the Grave, 
this stops people trying to ask your cast bar, trying to ask your ties of the brethren, trying to ask your max, um, which is really, really good. And also ghost ogring your monster effects because that really, really hurts the deck. And then it's also could be used as other disruptions. And then for our draw cards, I didn't find any ulti, ulti desires this weekend. We're playing two pot of desires and then the one upstart goblin. And a lot of people over the weekend asked me, why are you playing Upstart Goblin in a 41 card deck? And I said, well, it's a free spell card to activate my Magical Musketeer effects. So they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I don't really care about my opponent getting a thousand life points. We are able to just set up so much advantage that that life points just doesn't matter. And then we're playing Double Super Poly. The next regional I go to, I'm probably going to cut a certain card and I cut cut a certain package altogether because I didn't use it at all this weekend. Um, and that is the double or nothing package. I'm probably going to cut that and just play control and play a third super poly because um, super poly was just that that amazing against combo decks and just breaking their board and double or nothing does nothing against. Five negates pretty much but I played for this event I played one double or nothing and double super poly I sided the third super poly and a lot of times when I knew I was going first I sided out the double or nothing for the third super poly and even sometimes going second because the double the utopia double didn't really come up a lot and the double or nothing is just a brick if you draw it now moving on to the trap cards I play triple magical musket last stand and Triple Magical Musket Desperado. Uh, Last Stand is a counter trap that negates spell and trap cards. Really, really good going first and second because you can negate the Roar, you can negate the Rage, you can negate the Crescendo. Um, going, if you're going first and then they're going second, you can negate the World Legacy Guard Dragon. You can negate anything and it's really, really good. Um, and then Desperado targets one face of card on the field and destroys it. I use this to beat a Mystic Mind Exodia player. I use this to just pop cards, which is really, really good. And then the one Fiendish Deal. I think I may replace Fiendish Deal with Crooked Crown, um, but I'm going to have to test that. Because it didn't really come up too much. Most of the destruction that my opponent did... I guess this does protect against the Ghost Ogre, which is which can be kind of good. Um, but a lot of times I didn't see it in my opening hand, and so I wouldn't have gotten to it anyways. But it it, it put in a little bit of work. And then we also play Triple Infinite Impermanence, because this is a hand trap that can be activated in the same column as our Magical Musket Monsters, which is really, really good. And then the last two traps I played were two World Legacy Awakens to help me link summon into max on my opponent's turn. Um, once I got into the tournament, I found out how good this card really is. So I may play this as a, as a three of, or I may actually side all three copies. And because it's really only good going first and then side them in game two or three when I know I'm going first. That may be something that I end up doing because there's a car some cards in my side deck that I really wish I main decked. Um, but now going over the extra deck, we played Triple Magical Musketeer Max. And what this does is when it's Link Summoned, you can either add Magical Musketeer Spell or Trap cards from your deck to your hand equal to the amount of monsters your opponent controls with... Um, cards with different names from your deck to your hand up to the number of monsters your opponent controls or special summon monsters from your deck equal up to the number of spells and traps your opponent controls which is really really good because a lot of times you'd summon max and then that's where you go utopia double because you'd summon two level fours um, but what I found was that a lot of times my opponent had disruptions for the Utopia Double or they didn't have a monster where I can just OTK them. And so it was better to just break apart their board and keep the advantage going. Um, so there's a card that we'll get to here in, in a minute that helped me keep my advantage going, which was really good. Um, that I found instead of playing Utopia. Uh, but this was really good. The misplay that I had for the first four rounds is and this you guys are gonna give leave, leave me dumb comments about this but i never read the la i guess i skipped over the last line of max's effect 
and I didn't think that you can act while well, he's the only one on the field. I didn't see that he had the magical musketeer clause on him that says you can activate spells and traps from your hand, and that cost me the first the first three. Uh, that cost me about four of my rounds f because of that, and I I feel bad about that, and that's why I have to give this deck another chance because I did not lose a match after I learned what that I learned about that. I completely curb stomped all my opponents after that. So then for our other two links, two just generic links, Boral Sword and, and Phoenix. Boral Sword won me one game because after I did Max. And then Phoenix is just a generic card. And then we played the Utopia package. We played one Utopia, one double or nothing, and then one Utopia the Lightning. Um, this was okay. I didn't I didn't go into Utopia Double at all. There was one time where I needed to get over a monster and I had two level four, so I went Utopia, Utopia the Lightning. But that was before I knew what Max did. Really, I don't I don't think these are needed. So I may play uh, just three more generic cards, like some rank threes, or I may play um, just more generic, like deck hate. I don't know. Um, then the one card that helped me keep my advantage going was the Time Thief Redoer. And I made this a lot after max with two level fours because it, it was 2400 body and it keeps coming back. You keep banishing itself and it helps get rid of your opponent, some of your opponent's like next draws out of their deck. If you have a trap card, it's it's a bounce it's a spell card, lets you draw a card and the monster just banishes itself, which is really good. Um, so I, I played this a lot and a lot of it was I would I played it with monsters and then moved it out of the zone that Max was pointing to so I could make another Max that turn or not not that turn but make another Max my next turn um, which is really really good uh, I definitely would include this in the deck and then for our super poly targets we played one Starving Venom this card put in work um, there was a lot of times where I was doing multiple super polys. And so that and a couple of the other cards in this deck were really, really good. Uh, Mud Dragon, everybody told me that this card was garbage. I summoned this like four or five times, which is really, really good. Um, another anti-dragon card, I played Borlord Fury's Dragon. This card was really good. This card lets you uh, target one card in your field, one card in your opponent's field, and pop them both. It's really good. Um, I didn't face any zombies, but I had wanted this in here in case I did fight zombies. I played a Salmon Great player that kept bouncing this Violet Chimera back to my hand. I super polyed him three times in one duel with this same Violet Chimera, which is kind of funny. And then I didn't face any Cyber Dragons, but in case I did, I the one Fortress Dragon to round out my extra deck. Now, moving on to my side deck. Uh, three draw unlocks, never sided them because I didn't need them. Because this deck puts out so much advantage that you could just break apart any guard dragon board, which is really good. Uh, Triple Lancia killed Orcus, which is really good. One Cowboy, I never went into game, so I never really needed it. I, not, I never went into time, so I never really needed it. But it was there in case I did go into time. And then Triple Magical Musket dancing needle this card i want to at least main deck one maybe main deck two of these because it's so good against orcus it's so good against uh true draco it's so good against a lot of different decks because you're just banishing the cards out of their graveyard which helps you so much against a lot of different matchups any matchup that's trying to recur cards from the graveyard um i use this a lot to counter dragon link um because they would send like their, they'd send all their cards to the graveyard and then I would just banish them, which is really good. Um, this also kills Salmon Great because you're banishing their Sunlight Wolves, you're banishing their Gazelle, their Spinnies, their Jack Jaguar, anything to really that really gives them all the advantage to recur. This stops it, which is really, really good. And then Triple Evenly Match, this won me a couple games against some backer decks, which is really good. And then the third Super Poly, the third World Legacy Awakens. I may switch out uh, the Awakens for two Dancing Needles that I main deck and then put the double or nothing in the side or um, just cut it all together for the third Super Poly and then just find another side deck card to play. Um, because this did work when I knew I was going first and it was a brick when I wasn't. And then this just did work all day no matter what. So... 
But yeah, that's it for the deck profile. If that's all you guys wanted to see, then this will be the end of the video for you. But kind of talking about some of my matchups for the deck that I played here. Um, so round one, I played against Mystic Mind Exodia, which I curb stomped. I was I banished all the pieces from his graveyard, which is really good. Um, then I lost to Dragon Link. I lost to Salomon Greats. And I lost to World Chalice and an Orcus player. Those were the four losses that I had. And that's before I knew that I could activate cards from my hand with Max. And that was... It was really bad because I found out because my opponent asked to read Max. And he's and he read it out loud. And he's like... This is after... No, um, I didn't lose to to a Thunder Guard Dragon player. I lost to a uh, Orc an Orcus player. That's what it was. And the Orcus player, after the game, was reading all my Magical Musketeer cards. He was a super, super nice guy. Um, and he was basically like, okay, so, oh, this is really cool. And then he read Max out loud. And then I was like, wait, what? Ah. Uh, and he's like, what? You didn't know you can activate cards from your hand with Max? I was like, no. So that was really bad. But after that, I did not lose a single match after that. And, like, all my opponents were like, how, with your deck going off like this, how are you at this table? And I'm like, I, I didn't know what my cards did. And so that was really, really bad. But I, the matches that I won after the Exodia, the last three matches, there was eight rounds. I beat two, I beat a Thunder... Whoa. I beat a Thunder Dragon Link player, and then I beat a Thunder Dino player, and I beat another Dragon Link, which was really, really good. And that's the hardest deck to beat because they had full combo on board all games, and I just picked apart their board, baited their negates, and, like, it was insane because some of the cards in this deck, along with Impermanence with just negating stuff in general there's a lot of cards in here that bait a lot of different negates bait hand traps which is really really good because like you go through and this baits hand traps if you have cast bar um you can also cross stomp to negate effects or bait a negate because they have to uh super poly getting rid of all of your opponent's problematic cards then you have your own negates and then you pop cards more negates and it's just really good these also bait ash and bait some negates as well because your opponent doesn't want to have advantage and like these are all the the negate baits in your deck pretty much and that's like half your deck which is really really amazing so i'm definitely going to give this a try at the lenexa kansas regional again um that's going to be a smaller regional so maybe i can do a lot better but that, this is definitely something where um, this deck has a lot of potential, this format. And I was actually really surprised on how this deck actually did once I learned how to use it. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe if you guys are new, and look forward to some more Magical Musket content here in the future. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.